Elf Quest, the original quest, issue two, Raid at Sorrow's End, part three. Angry villagers swarm into the high hills where the wolf riders have taken hey, refuge. Get back here! The strenuous climb begins to take its toll, to us. and few are able to keep pace with the agile Rayek. Follow me, you laggards. Follow for Lita's sake. <laughs> They're a pretty soft lot. I doubt most of them will make it up this far. Don't want to like me, hard to die. Maybe you better pick off the strong No, no, no killing. Not if we can help it. Come on, you weaklings, climb! <sighs> You're a mountain lion among us, Rayek. We, we can't keep up. Then go back to your gardens, dirt diggers. You're no use to me or to me. Huh? I'll save her myself. Why, why? You never heard this one. I'll give him a that. Cutter, do you think she knows how to send? She might give away her position. No, no. She'd have done it long before now if she could. But one thing's certain, she knows how to scream. Rick pauses, his keen ears straining for the slightest hint of sound. Just one slip, barbarians, and I'll find you. But the raven-haired elf does not know that nothing is as silent as wolf riders in hiding. That is, usually. Oh, she's, she's biting, biting me! me. Uh, well, well, hit her! You can't do that! So, tell her if she doesn't behave, you'll we'll do something awful to her. Ow, like what? Let her wander. Let, uh, listen. I'm gonna take my hand away. But if you scream, well, you won't like what will happen to you. Vita? Vita! I'm coming! Let's what go, now, savage. wise one? Help! Uh, I think we're gonna have a visitor. Vita! Where are you? If you've harmed her, barbarians, I... Calm down, black hair. She's fine. Huh? Very strong, in fact. Rayek! Do something! Release her, land rat, or I'll... No, I don't think so. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Jackal, leader of Jackal. I say, calm down. You're not impressing anyone. Let's have to pick Pokey Long Face. Rayek turns. Yeah. And Pike stiffens like a wooden doll. Whoa! This one could do more than send. Pin him down. Cover his eyes. He may have other tricks. Pike, wake up. Lita's indignation gives way to sudden fright. Don't let them kill Rayek! I... please... I'll do anything you ask! Surprised, Cutter gently sets Lita on her feet. He gazes into her luminous eyes for a long, silent time. <laughs> Enchanted with the beauty he finds there. It is an alien beauty, yet somehow familiar. Like a reoccurrence of a forgotten dream. I came to steal water, but I've had my heart stolen instead. Take your <laughs> filthy hands off me, you wild dogs! By the lost dwelling of the High Ones, you'll pay for this! What? <laughs> How's that? What do you know of the High Ones, Black Hair? Speak! Uh. You dare profane our ancient fathers. We are all descendants of the High Ones, stranger! Can you not see that we are all of one race? I claim no kinship with this vermin! Quiet, Rayek! Who are you, Pale Ones? We are wolf riders from the faraway woodlands. For three days we have journeyed through the burning waste. You lie! No one can cross the desert and live. Desert, huh? So that's what you call it. If it can't be crossed, how did your people get here, black hair? There are too many questions to be answered now. Come down to the village. My father, the Sun Toucher, will know if you are telling the truth. And if you are, we'll help you as we can. And if you are not... From their hiding place on the other side of the hill, Moonshade, Rainsong, Clearbrook, Dewshine, and the children are brought into the strange elven village. 
Surrounded by curious onlookers, the sullen, wary wolf riders assemble before a gentle yet commanding figure. Call me Sun Toucher. I do not see with my eyes, wolf riders, for I gave them to the almighty Daystar many years ago. But the heart can learn to see more deeply than the eye. Let me look at you now. For a moment, there is silence. Then the Sun Toucher softly smiles. I such a great weariness and hidden sorrow for the loss of all that you have known. Your days have been perilous, yet you have endured them with courage and a ferocious will to survive. Life and all that it means is precious to you, more so because your number is small. <gasps> Brilliance and nightfall! Forgive me, Sun Toucher, but we had to leave two of us behind in the desert. One was injured, perhaps dying. I gotta go back for them before it's too late. But you are exhausted, young chieftain. And so is your beast. No matter. If there is a healer among you village who dares follow me, let him do so now. I'm going. Wait. Wolf Rider. I am a healer. Lita, what are you saying? You can't go with him. I forbid it. You... Forbid? Freyak is taken aback as much by his own fierce possessiveness as by Lita's icy stare. He apologizes and offers instead to accompany her, aware that he dares not leave her alone with Cutter. The pale, feral-eyed barbarian has had a strange effect on Lita, an effect that not even she fully understands. Tam. Tam. Why is that strange word embedded itself in my mind? What does it mean? But Cutter has only one concern now. One thing that drives him on, though his strength is all but spent. Obey, scavenger! <laughs> Leave us alone! Alone. <laughs> Forever. Ooh! Nightfall! Cutter? Oh, Cutter! Who is she? This baby can help Redlands. You must trust her. Oh. Lita kneels before the stricken wolf rider. Tenderly, she takes his hand in hers and discovers the unthinkable. These wounds were deliberately inflicted. Who could have done such a thing? Humans. The same ones who tried to destroy us with fire. Really? We have legends of such creatures. But I never believed in them. He's looking at their handiwork right now. Silence. This is Rayak. The healing begins. Not a word is spoken, nor a sound uttered. Yet great power is invoked as Lita passes into a dreamlike trance. Beneath her gentle, ministering fingers, cracked bones begin to knit, torn tissues mend, and hidden bleeding subsides. Redlance's reawakened heart beats angrily now. Staving off death with a fierce will. <laughs> I have given him the strength he needs to recover. And you have given me back a tribesman. No words of things can say enough, beautiful. No, leader. don't. I, I don't want you to touch me again. Rick? <laughs> That dog. What? <laughs> Redlands lives thanks to your daughter. I hope that someday she will forgive me for carrying her off like that. I did it without thinking, almost as if I had no choice. Perhaps there was no choice for Wolf Rider. We are the Sun Folk, and ours is a way of peace. We would have freely given you the provisions which you took by force, but though you came to us in violence, you are welcome now to stay here and rest. No one has ever been kind to us before. We thought we were all alone in the world where life was short and often bitter. Your hardships have caused you to forget what it means to be elves. Come now, all of you. This time, you were brought before the Mother of Memory. Bewildered, but no longer suspicious, the Wolf Riders follow Sun Toucher to the largest hut in the village, 
strange, colorful symbols cover its clay walls, conveying a message of peace and brotherhood. Enter. These way. A slender figure, seated in a misty pool of light, beckons the wolf riders forward. Cutter's breath catches in his throat as a low, languid voice breaks the silence. Welcome, my ragged young visitors. Welcome to Sorrow's End. Oh my gosh, you guys, we did it! We made it to 200 subscribers! Thank you! I don't even know how to put into words how awesome that is. I was thinking maybe we could do, like, a cast Q&A, or a live stream, or a funny YouTube video. I have a couple ideas in mind, akin to Meme Quest. Um, let me know what you guys want, or think, or any suggestions would be great. Yay! <laughs> Thank you so much.